Hey, what's happening guys? Today, we're gonna talk about those wires in that tree. That little white piece of plastic up there. That is my ham radio antenna. It is what's called a dipole, hung in an inverted V. And it is, I don't know, somewhere between 15 and 20 feet off the ground. But let's go inside, it's cold out here. Okay, so that's the other end of my antenna. It's got an adapter on it so we can do some antenna analysis on the vector network analyzer here. And that's this little guy, the uh, Nano VNA, which is an incredibly useful device if you're into radios and antennas and things like that. So we're going to use it in its most simple mode today. It's just to take a look at what's called VWSR. That is uh, the standing wave ratio. I'm not going to get into a lot of the antenna math, but it's like golf, okay? You want it to be as low as possible. The lower that number is, the better off you are in transmitting. More of your power goes out as radio signal and less is, goes out as heat, basically. So we can use this device to show us how to do that. Let me get it set up now. All right, so first thing we need to know is the Nano VNA is capable of a huge range of frequencies, and we're going to narrow this down. We only want to deal with the frequencies of ham radio, basically. So click the menu. I'm going to click Stimulus. Yeah, there we go, Stimulus. We're going to start at 7. Hit M for megahertz. We're going to click stop, and I'm only going to go up to 30 megahertz. So now we have uh, set our frequency range, which you can see down there on the bottom. Start at 7, stop at 30 megahertz. So the next thing we need to do is just calibrate this thing really quick for those particular frequencies. Uh, where's calibrate? Calibrate. So to do the calibration... We just need to put on these little attachments that they sent us. And the first one once it says open. So it's just a little SMA cap with no center pin. Screw it on there real quick like. And we just touch open. Done. Now it wants short. So the short is the one with the all metal inside that's completely shorted out. And we touch short, done. Next it wants a load. And in this case it's the silver one, it's got a little white uh, insulator in there. So we put in the load. All right, now we're only going to be doing S11 tests out of port one. So we don't really need to worry about the isolation in through. So now hit done. And now it is calibrated for those frequencies. But there's still a lot going on on the screen that we don't really need to see all of that information. So. Go back, back, display, trace. Uh, we just want trace zero, which is our SWR, and you'll see it up there. So I'm going to attach the antenna. So that is what my antenna looks like from 0 to 30 megahertz. And at 30 megahertz, way up there. Why is S11? one says log mag. We don't want log mag. We want format SWR. That's what we want. 
that that's more what I was expecting to see so let's start all the way over here at 7 megahertz our SWR is 2.05 which is somewhat high but well within the range of any antenna tuner and then as we move across the band one moment sorry about that I'm sure you guys could hear Miss Dog whining in the background so let's look at the hand band uh, 40 meters which goes from what 7.1 to 7.3 So at 7, we have an SWR of 2. And at the end of the band, it's still 2. So like I said, well within range of any tuner. Uh, next up, we'll look at uh, 10 megahertz. That's the 30 meter band. 10.1 to 10.150, that's all there is to it. It's at... It's between 1.9 and 2.0. Again, well within any tuner. All right, next up is a 20 meter band, which I like a lot. Starts at 14.1. See, that antenna is tuned just a little bit long. The best point of the antenna and I haven't touched it. I just hung it up in a tree and I was blown away by how good it is. The best point of that antenna is at 13.6 megahertz. But here we are at 14.1. It's at 1.3. All the way up to 14.3. It's at 1.5. So it's perfect in, in that 20 meter band. All right, let's go to 18 megahertz. 18.1. All right, well, it started at 18.040. It's at 1.8. And then at the end of that, it's 18.168. And it's at 1.8. So it's still well within any tuners. I mean, we don't have to go through all the rest of these, but you get the idea. I just threw a wire in a tree. I, I used the, uh, you know, 468 divided by the frequency, center frequency you wanted. I wanted about halfway in the 20 meter band and that told me to make them about eight foot six inches per side i cut them a little long expecting to have to adjust so i went uh eight foot eight inches per side i made a little plastic center divider that i 3d printed i wired the wires to that i twisted the wires to that i soldered them to the uh the points Of a connector that I just had a whole bunch of them sitting around here now I can't find one an SO239 connector you know one looks like that and uh, me and my buddy Jim threw it up in a tree threw, threw a rope up over a tree branch and pulled that thing up and we tied the ends out at about a 30 degree angle and I don't know the RF gods have smiled upon me because look at that it's 2.0 or, or better across all the bands. Amazing. Amazing. I got so lucky. I'm not going to touch it. Yeah, I could tune it better. I could tune it better for 20 meters. You know, I could move that, that, that dip right there up to about right there. I could even move it. Yeah, I could even move it to right there. Put the dip at 14.13, right at the bottom of the 20 meter uh, phone band, and it'd be the most perfect 20 meter antenna. But it would mess everything else up. When it comes to RF and antenna design, everything influences everything. But that's kind of what makes it fun for me. If you're a ham, let me know down below, and uh, maybe I'll catch you on the air. Alright guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. Big thanks to you guys for watching. That's it. I'm out. Peace.